everyone, artist Dana Haynes here. I'm busy this week basically replacing a hard drive that failed, two of them, of my backups. But luckily I saved them up line, so I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Since I have to go through each file individually anyway, now is a good time to add my information to all my, my artwork. A decade ago, they didn't have metadata that you could in insert in your artwork. So when I did all my practical artwork, this wasn't included. I had included a watermark on everything that I, I did, but they didn't have metadata back then. So what is metadata? The concept of metadata started at least 21 years ago. Basically, they inserted the title, the description, keywords, and the owner of the page embedded into a web page so that search engines could pick it up better. If you're an artist, a designer, or just a beginner putting your artwork out on the web, this is very important. You want to do this right from the start. We didn't have this 10 years ago. All we had was watermarking, which I'll get into in another episode. It's built-in protection for you, the artist. It, it gives your con copyright information, your contact details, when it was created by whom and how. And, you know, if you're a photographer, you can even add who's in the picture, where it was taken, all kinds of details. Not only does it give somebody a way to get a hold of you if they like your work, it also is a built-in protection saying this is my work. And this is something you want to do right from the get-go, so you don't have to go back and edit things like I have <laughs> to protect yourself. The gist of it is Google's going to pick up the creator, the credit line, and the copyright notice, so there's no excuse anymore for people just taking artwork off the internet. It's going to show. Knowing how to protect your work is probably one of the most important steps. It's a good habit to get into, no matter what your line of work, designer, artist, traditional artist, web designer, whatnot, photographer, you all need to know them. You're basically going to use Photoshop and Lightroom, those are the programs I'm familiar with. Um, in this particular case, I'm using Photoshop. So I'm pulling on my DeviantArt here, and you can see I'm going to go down to my storage here and pull up all my artwork. I have like 1100 something and you know, 55, 57 pages of artwork on there now stored that I have to download for this database that I lost. So I'm pulling it up, you know, I have to edit each one. I'm checking the pixels on it marking it for a download and I'm going to open it up for free download for a few seconds. I haven't offered them normally for free download. Basically my plans were to make wallpaper and for phones and TVs and computers so I never offered it that way before. So I'm going to open it up in Photoshop here. I'm going to get rid of this. And this is what I've been doing all day. Tons of these. It takes a while. So I'm going to check the image size because the way I sa save my files is in a particular order. So I'm nice, neat, and organized. If you've ever been a photographer busy in a Christmas season, you understand the, the need to pull things up quickly. Now I've went down to file info and I'm going to add the metadata that I was talking about since I have to pull all these up anyway. And I've already filled mine out. So there you go. Now it's added that to it. And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save it in my fractal art folder. In the way that I save, basically I do the year. I add the, what PPI it is so I know because I'll have five different versions and I want to know which one's the original, which one's, you know, at 300 PPI. I want to know which one's the lower PPI because it, it matters on different products that I make. 
and I want to know how many inches it is and I also want to know how many pixels it is because I work in different mediums. I work in print and I also work on digital so I need to know those both at a glance. So this is the original file and I also check to make sure that DH or whatever you want to use for a symbol that you've added your watermark there. So I have my watermark as you can see on there so I put DH in it and I also put what file format so just at a, a glance I know this one I forgot to change the to P, P, PGN but anyway <laughs> I'm stuttering there so I'm going to add the last thing I do is that's the file name that's the name of the piece so there you go that's how I save, save my artwork so I can find it it's nice neat and organized and we're saving. I'm going to have to go back to DVRart. Well, this is saving. And I have to edit it back again. And this is the only way I'm going to re add my watermark, make sure it's not a free download, and update it. And then I'm going to check to make sure the watermark's there because I'm paranoid like that but no I it's just a good these are just good habits to be in to make sure your art safe boom and we're gonna pull it up see that the watermarks there and then I'm done with that piece and I can move on to the next one and do it all over again even here it's not pulling them up quickly there you go watermark and that's pretty much how I've been doing things for a long time but now I'm adding the metadata so now I'm going to show you how to add the metadata because that was just a quick run through so you, we're going to just open create something new here in Photoshop and once you do not the edit screen you go down to the file down the file screen the file info and you're going to fill out just the basic tab. You're going to start at the top. The top. You know, document title. That was basically what I was working on. The author is me. So I'm going to put my name in there. The author title. I'm an artist. Description. This would be something that you would want to fill out that you would like you would want to see come up in the search engine. A description of the piece. Just short, sweet, you know, you don't want a whole blog about it or anything like this. It's what you would see on a return of search engine, you know, so you want it under 500 words, probably a couple, basically three or four sentences is what shows up. Um, keywords, you want to put in what somebody would search for for this piece. Um, I used artist, artist design. The thing to note about that is you want to put the commas in behind it so it separates it. But basically when it, the image is searched for, either you know in Bridge if you're using Adobe to search on your computer, what you would search for when you were looking for that piece, or you know in search engines what others would look search for to find that piece. So that was a red so I would have put red or something like that. So, you know, basically here I'm getting the copyright licensing URL or to put in it. So that way, you know, if they have any questions, here's the answers. So if they like my work, they can find me to license it. Or if they're just taking it, they got a notice, boom, right off the bat. It's mine. So here you can put in all your camera data. Usually I think this auto pop, that one auto pops because with the DS, the newer cameras. <laughs> I'm stuttering today. So anyway, you can normally put that, the original, and this is what's neat. Everything that I was saving 10 years ago files that way. You can put in there, this is where I created it, the date I created it. Yes, I'm in the U.S. And, you know, all this wonderful information about it. Who gets credit for it? I worked for a studio for a long time. If I had 
they'd actually let us use Photoshop, I would have had to put that studio's name in there instead of my own. I was the creator, but they get the credit for it. So depending on how you're doing this is important too. Who are you working for, you know? But this kind of information is important. It also helps you pull it up through Bridge on Adobe. And you can, is it, I believe some use this to pass information around from artist to artist when they're working on projects. This is what they were taught, what I was talking about with Google. You know, stuff you need to know. I don't think they're going to hand out your phone number or anything, but if somebody likes your work, you want that in there so they have a way to contact you with your email. You don't necessarily maybe want to put your address in there, but if you have a business location, it's a good idea. Because, let's face it, somebody sees your work, they can, write, they can get the information from the piece now. You know, instead of hunting you down all over, it's right there. You know, again, the date you created it, the year it is. And in my case, that's fractal artwork or digital art. Um, not sure what that code is. But again, you can put the GPS data in even. You know, and that's important. That you want to show up on Google Maps or you have a picture for Google Maps, that's a good idea. You know, if you're showing, doing architecture or something like that. You know, even if you're doing traditional art, and it's of a place or a person, you can put who the actual person is and save information. It's only going to make your artwork more valuable. The more information somebody has about it, you know, a hundred years, this is going to be so cool. If, the, you know, we haven't changed everything all over by then. But, you know, you, you can still open really old files and stuff like that. So, you know, we're just only going to advance. And I assume the other tabs, audio data, video data, there's stuff that you can put in there pertaining to those creative fields or what it, whatnot. But photography, I thought it was interesting that I could do this, you know, add the forest preserve, show what town I took the picture in, you know. taking a little bit to do this. And you can just insert it. I'm kind of <laughs> getting lost on my tabs there, but you can insert multiple things is the point here. So, but the IPTC is, is important to Google. You definitely want to make sure at least you can fill out the title who gets credit for it, and the copyright. Bare minimum, you should be putting that in. And it's pretty, pretty simple. I mean, you just auto fill out the forms. Again, why this is so important, if you, you've been doing this for 21 years, when, you know, people used to steal your logos, you know, on the internet, you know, how frustrating is that? You know, or just take something and not give it you credit for it. Now, you know, there's an embedded, this is mine, what are you doing with it kind of deal. You know, you have proof, this is mine. You know, and I think the way things are going, that, that artists that have been around as long as I have that dig did fall down the digital wormhole <laughs> that we've seen it come a long ways but we still see see people taking art for granted and they should just be able to take it or whatnot you know so again I'm adding my copyright notice there this is who owns it you know but it's really important to protect your work because if you just put stuff out there and again, I'm going to show you, sorry, see all that information is still there. But if you want to save it, 
So you can use it again. You can hit export and see I've made a couple of them already. And you can hit save and that way when you pull up your next piece you can just go down, hit file info, pull up the template and boom, go to work on your, your art. You'll have to pick the correct tab. The first one's for creating one, a new one. The second one's for keep the old stuff plus add this new stuff and the third one, the third pick is for picking one that's already done. So, and you just hit OK. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to make that general and I'm going to save this file. So there you have it folks, metadata in a nutshell, and it should be the first step before you ever do anything. It was the first thing I wanted to bring to you about the art business, getting online, what you should do. First step is to protect yourself. So for newer artists or those of you that have been in the trenches 20 some odd years and know this is a big deal. Get in good habits right from the get beginning. Add your metadata right when you open your file, your artwork, picture of your artwork, your design, your photograph. So if I was a new artist just getting online, this is where I would want somebody to teach me right off the bat where to start, how to get started, which direction to go and how to protect myself getting online. And I don't want to get off on a rant or anything, but a lot of these bigger networks profit off content creators, whether you're designers, artists, cartoonists, what have you, photographers. We post content, their site gets big, they make money, but we're still making peanuts. So I really want artists to protect themselves getting on here because it is a business. People make their livings this way. and. I don't want you to devalue somebody else because you're, you're putting your stuff out there for free or unprotected. And I don't want you to devalue what you're doing. It's important. You're contributing to society. You know, you can make products with these. You can sell them. Even if you don't sell, you're protecting other artists by protecting your work. And at some point you may decide that you want to sell your work. and you know, putting, embedding this right off the bat keeps it, the value of it up instead of lowering it. So people can't just take, 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 take like they've done. And I kind of ran about this because I have been doing this 20 years and I have had stuff taken and had to ask people, would you please remove that? Would you please take it down? Would you please delete that? You know, no, you can't use your cell phone in my, my photo studio and stuff like that. So, you know, we have to educate people. So if you're a new artist, be aware of it. You know, when you're creating your product images or showing off your stuff on, on social media. Um, if you're an older artist, teach your assistants. You know, if you're a photo photographer, teach them how to do that. It's really easy to form a good habit right off the bat if that's the way you learn. So this is why I'm starting with this. And it's really hard to break a bad habit once you get going. And ha you'll end up having to re-edit all your stuff. Now I had a database breakdown. That's the reason why I'm doing this. But at some point this is going to set you apart from professional and just people, you know, playing around with Instagram filters or something. So you want to set yourself apart. You want to do this right off the bat and be able for people to contact you. If you found this video useful, please click the like button down there. Let me know. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ring my bell there so you get more updates for future videos like this. If you have any questions, be sure to comment down below. If there are videos or how-tos you want done in video. Again, comment down below. I'm so grateful you're here. I appreciate you watching and we can grow more content like this with your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.